Okay, welcome back to the next part of the video. In this video series, I'm going from Earth to Ganymede. That's one of the moons of Jupiter. In the last video, we had already brought the XR2 up into orbit, and so we had to uh, rendezvous with the Aero Freighter. The Aero Freighter was already in orbit at an altitude of about 13,600 kilometers up above Earth's surface, so it's out there quite a ways. And we were able to rendezvous uh, in a you know, reasonable amount of time. It only took about six hours uh, from liftoff. Let me actually check the XR2's mission timer. Uh, yeah, about uh, closer to seven hours. So about seven hours from the time we took off to until the time we got all the way out to the Aero Freighter and got uh, rendezvoused and docked. So now in this part, we're ready to plan our eject burn out to Jupiter. And as I stated um, in part one, you know, I did do a lot of planning ahead of time so we don't have to uh, find dates and all that. That's already been done and we've already got our Transex plan set up for going out to Jupiter. I've got a lot of videos already that show how to do all that so I kind of thought I would shortcut some of, those th some of those things, do them off camera so that we could focus a little bit more just on the execution of the flight itself. So let's bring up Transex here on both sides and uh, set up a maneuver because we are now in orbit around the Earth, but we haven't yet set up a maneuver. So let's go ahead and do that. So back on this side on stage one, we'll go to view maneuver. We'll turn maneuver mode on. And on this side, we'll have view escape plan. And we see that we need uh, 7,102 meters per second worth of delta V. So let's go to prograde and we'll just type that number in rather than using the plus minus stuff. 7102. And our eject date is going to be uh, basically on the other side of the planet. So let's go to a uh, ultra setting and just move that around. Go to a super setting, move it a little faster now down to hyper and I just want to lay that hypothetical line straight over top of the eject plan the escape plan and it looks like right about there is good so now we'll go forward on this side and we'll kill the previous uh, stuff that we had set up so kill the prograde and kill the change plane and now that gives priority to the maneuver now we can go forward to uh, stage three on that side to view the encounter. Come back to stage one on this side, view uh, setup actually, first of all, and let's change graph projection. It's already set to focus, so that's fine. We don't need to change that. And let's set, make sure focus is on this side as well, like so. Now view encounter and view maneuver over here and see if there's any adjustments we want to make. Uh, again, getting to Jupiter is quite easy, so it's, it, there's hardly any adjustments that have to be made. Go ahead and bring that minimum altitude out just a little bit, because if we look at orbit MFD and we, if we reference Jupiter, and then we target Ganymede, we can see that Ganymede has an altitude above Jupiter of about, uh, you know, 1,000 um, gigameters. So we'll bring down... Here it says our minimum altitude is going to be 514. Actually, let me think about that for a second. To get the optimum braking when we get out to Jupiter, we want to be in as close as we can. So actually, instead of taking it out to 1,000, we'll bring it down a, a bit. And that's going the wrong way, so we'll go positive. That's not, that's too far. Okay, so somewhere around that number is as good as we're going to get on prograde. So let's look at some plane change, see if there's anything we can do there. Yeah, that's bringing us in closer. And we'll go back to prograde, fine tune it a bit more. OK, 
Okay, back to plane change. And I'm just going to go for uh, 30,000 at this point because off the top of my head I don't know how close I can get to Jupiter. I'll have to do a little bit of, I'll check on that between this part and the next part. And then maybe we'll come in even closer. Um, I, there's a certain <clears throat> altitude if you get down too low then you know obviously uh, the, you know the atmosphere will present problems and and then in, in other things to consider would be radiation and such, but we can't take that into consideration um, as far as an orbiter doesn't model that type of stuff anyway. So we'll go with that, uh, 30,000 kilometers for now. And uh, the burn's not going to be for 12,000 seconds, so we'll warp time forward quite a bit more, and then we'll do any corrections that we need to do. One other thing I want to check, though, before we commit to this burn is... Uh, this inclination says we're going to be 133 degrees. That's uh, retrograde. That's a backwards orbit around Jupiter. And the inclination of Ganymede is almost equatorial. It has a 14, uh, 0.14 degree inclination, so it's almost perfectly around the equator. And it's going to be, uh, that's a prograde orbit, so we want to make sure that when we arrive at Jupiter, we're prograde and not retrograde, so let's change that. So instead of any, a backwards inclination, come over to View, Maneuver, and we'll probably just put in an, an amount of prograde to, uh, so that we go the other way around the planet. Okay, that's going the wrong way, so let's go like that. Okay, now our inclination's positive. Okay, just watching the inclination, get trying to get it a little more equatorial. Now we'll adjust uh, plane change. <clears throat> okay, back to prograde. What we might want to do <clears throat> is plan on adjusting the inclination as part of the part of one of the mid-course corrections because as we're leaving Earth, uh, I think it might actually cost us more DV to do it here to, to make that to take that in consideration all the way here at this point. I'm not sure on that. But as I continue to add in, you know, change plane, it's just having the not having the desirable effects. Let's reset plane change for now. Let's just go to prograde. Yeah, according to this plan I would have almost a polar orbit at Jupiter, but I think <clears throat> Obviously, Jupiter is really far away, so I can just plan on making the inclination change as part of the mid-course correction. I think that'll be best. So, first of all, let me bring the minimum altitude down. And then I'll just take one quick look at plane change again. Okay. And we wanted to come down even more than that, I remember. <clears throat> okay, let me take away a little more plane change.
Yeah, I think something like this will be uh, will be a good compromise. Yeah, actually, it looks like if I keep going with this... Okay, that's... I think what I need to do then is take away some plane change this way. You know, go farther into the negative, I mean. And then go... A little bit more prograde, because that's also bringing down the inclination. That's getting us more equatorial. Yeah. Okay, so now actually back to plane change, because that's too much. Add some plane change back in. And back to prograde. Yeah, that's that's a good compromise. That gets us a, a low inclination. And that gets us a minimum altitude down pretty low like we want. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so minimum altitude around you know fifty, uh, you know fifty sixty thousand kilometers, something like that. And of course, we'll make adjustments as we go out with mid course corrections, and we've got a low relative inclination or a low inclination. Okay, so view target, and is there anything we want to do? I guess we can close up the cargo bay doors or the uh, the bay doors, which we never did. So close that and that animation will take a little bit of time so we'll just warp time forward around to the time to do the burn <clears throat> while that animation completes and we don't have any autopilots on or anything do we let me just check no okay and when we get close to the time to do the burn we will of course check our maneuver and make sure that things are still in the ballpark of what we want. So for now, we're just orbiting the Earth. Getting close to the time to do the burn. Oh, almost overshot that. So now we're less than five minutes, or well, uh, closer to... S six or seven minutes, something like that. View over to maneuver. do an update and things did not change so we're good and let's just double check everything here PE distance is 20 M and that's what we need because that's our altitude Uh, auto reference earth yeah 20 M that's good okay view over to maneuver or rather view over to target translation rotation and let's get rotated toward the X it's going to be prograde obviously so let's just rotate prograde and if we look outside we can see this gigantic Aero freighter moving into position. And let me go to view escape plan real quick. took care of the relative inclinations, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, for now we're going to be targeting Jupiter. Okay, turn prograde autopilot off now. And we'll get ready to do the burn. Again, we'll use burn time calculator to start and stop the burn. So DV is going to be this number, 7174. 
and I'm not actually sure how to have it start exactly on time. I just have to press the BRN button when this says zero. Yeah. Okay. Translate rotation. Finish getting rotated. And we are rotated, so we'll go ahead and warp time forward to get all the way out to the time to begin the burn. Coming up on the burn in less than 60 seconds, but of course we are at 10x time warp, so that will not take long. <clears throat> Couple seconds to go, finish getting rotated, and getting ready to burn. And burning. This is going to be quite a long burn. You can see it's over 10 minutes long, close to 11 minutes, actually a little over 11 minutes. So we'll obviously do some time warp here. Go ahead and bring up Orbit MFD so we can watch how our orbit's progressing. And let me fix the green X a little bit. <clears throat> And we'll go to 10x on the uh, time warp to get through the burn. Come back to real time, fix the green X. Time warp. Fix our green X. And time warp. And we're escaping Earth now. Adding just a little bit of rotation because that green X seems to be wanting to uh, come down. So I'm just adding in <clears throat> a bit of up pitch to correct for that. Seems like it needs a bit more. Still have 3,000 meters a second to go, but we are at 10x, so it won't take long. back to real time. Let me bring up TransX over here and come back to stage one and let's just see how this looks. Looks good. Our hypothetical, or I, I should say our real orbit, the green line, is starting to match the hypothetical. Pitch up a little bit more for the green X. And just a little bit more time warp. Got to watch it because we are getting close to the end of the burn. Okay. And burn time calculator will shut this off for us so we don't have to worry about shutting things down. Just trying to keep that green X centered. It's a little stubborn. Three hundred meters a second to go, and our actual orbit's matching up with the hypothetical pretty well. Almost to the end of the burn. Can bring up burn time calculator just to watch that come to the close. Fifteen seconds left on the burn. Okay, sixty seconds to go or rather 60 meters per second to go. And we're done. Uh, for some reason, the delta V here is a little higher than what BTC completes. So we'll put in a little bit more manually. And now we'll stop that view over to setup, or rather maneuver, turn maneuver mode off, 
and let's check out stage three encounter and everything looks quite good translation just a little bit of down translation for the inclination and it's also bringing the minimum altitude down a bit And that'll be fine because by the time we, uh, you know, warp time forward, get out from the Earth, things will change a bit, and we've got a very long way to go to get to Jupiter, so we'll have plenty of time to do mid-course corrections. Okay, what else do we need to think about here? I think that pretty well covers it, so we're ready to do a bit of time warp. We've still got enough time; we can get out a little way away from Earth. So let's go ahead and go to 10x. Actually, before I do that, let me control S. I like to save at key points. So we'll have a save point here as we're leaving Earth. All right now we'll go to time warp. Rotation. And we are leaving Earth on the luxury liner, the Aero Freighter. And we'll go to a thousand. And it's pretty interesting just how quickly you leave behind the Earth. You know, you spend 99% of your mission in between in between bodies. And we'll go to ten thousand. Earth and Moon are now in the rear view mirror. And stages will be updating soon. Of course, we don't really necessarily have to worry about doing a mid-course correction as soon as the stages update. That used to be what I thought you had to do, but I've since learned that's not the case. So we're watching, uh, you know, stages just updated, and now this will probably wobble in and out for a bit, so we'll go forward for a ways, because again, Jupiter's a very long way out. <clears throat> and let's go to 100,000. One thing we do want to watch, though, is our oxygen, just to make sure we don't uh, go forward too far, because it's going to take us a couple years to get out there. So we're at And at 100,000, you know, you can see the objects in the solar system moving around pretty quickly, relatively speaking. Not even sure what all these are. That's Venus. Got Mars over there, Mercury here, Saturn out there. Earth-Moon system behind us. Let's press F1, jump back inside the aerofreighter Freighter and just see how things are coming along. Right now, we've got a crash course with Jupiter. I'm totally fine with that for now. We've still got one year of locks. So when we get down to maybe, you know, just a month or so, then we'll come back over to uh, this panel and we'll add, you know, one or two locks modules in so that we're not running out of air. Okay, well, we are on our way to Jupiter, and I don't think it's terribly interesting to watch just a bunch of time warp. I did a lot of that when I did the grand tour of the solar system, you know, out to Jupiter and out and then from Jupiter to Saturn. And it turns out that, you know, when you're going out to these outer planets, it just takes uh, quite a bit of time. Even at 100,000 time acceleration, you know, you're still looking at 10 plus minutes, in some cases a half hour or more just to go from one planet to the next, and um, I just don't feel like it's interesting enough to record all that. So we're about only at 24 minutes, about 25 minutes in this part of the video, but I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and I'll continue the time warp out toward Jupiter off camera. Um, hopefully, if, if there are any mid-course corrections that I have to do, hopefully I'll come back and start recording before that. But if, it, if it's just a tiny amount of correction, 
um, and, and I'm doing that before I get out to Jupiter I'll just go ahead and take care of that off camera as well because it's just not you know that interesting to record all the time work so if you like the video if you like the series please hit the like button of course if you don't like it just hit that don't like I'm okay with that um, if you like the content on my channel please subscribe if you're not already subscribed and if you uh, want to check out my Facebook page I post all my videos there but you also get to see things on my Facebook page that I can't post on YouTube just various pictures different articles and other links to videos that I find on YouTube things like that it's pretty good so check that out as well link is in the description down below and I will see you in the next part